kids didn't even get up yet. More breaks is that. Oh, I forgot to hit the video button. Anyway, all right. We're in that panel. Okay, good morning. Welcome to church. We are going to start in the main hymnal. <clears throat> Page 98. <clears throat> uh, great is thy faith. The, all of them? <laughs> They're probably still wiped right out. <laughs> All three verses. to prayer is and uh, Tom and Barb got moved last night into their apartment so I'm sure she's pretty wore out they're probably still sleeping so um, we don't have a bulletin today but is there anybody that we need to add to our list just want to make sure um, what I have for the list just um, uh, Mickey Carla's sister Keep her in your prayers still. Um, things are going well, going a little better, but she still needs some prayer for personal. 
And then, of course, Linda is back with us. Keep that family in prayers um, <clears throat> as we move forward. Um, and I'm just um, going over to see. I guess it's basically the same as last week. And we'll, from there, let us uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for taking us through another week and guiding us back here to hear of your love, the gift that you've given unto us. And we thank you for all you've given unto us. As we move into this time, as we uh, look at your son and what he has done for us on the cross of Calvary. We thank you again, Lord, for those that you have uh, healed, those that you are healing, and those that you are taking care of as you walk beside those and walk beside the families of those that are in need of your help. We ask you, Lord, to, to uh, help us as we need to reach out to those that haven't heard of your love but need your love, especially in this time of the year. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you've supported us with, the, the care that you've given unto all. And if there's any out there that need our help, we know you will direct us in that direction. In Christ's name we pray, amen. For our second uh, hymn, we'll be in the hymnal, page 60, Burdens. Page 60, yes, all three verses. Our next one will be the handout, do Lord. Um, what do you want to do, just the first two? Sure. Uh, let's do just the first two verses of do Lord.
Rachel doesn't stomp on that one. Oh, I didn't, I didn't hear you. She was, yeah. <laughs> I know uh, we appreciate Eddie putting that in because now we don't go through camp without everybody stomping in that part. So, um, moving on to announcements this morning. As we said, um, got Tom and Barb, they spent their first night there at the apartment. So, um, hopefully things will settle down. The, it's going to be a whirlwind with their house this week, but hopefully everything will go smoothly there. Um, also, communion today at the end of service. Uh, ladies Bible study. I heard you guys did pretty good. You had a pretty good crowd. And we're going to go every other Monday, so we're not having it tomorrow. No, no, okay, no, just so everybody hears it, no ladies Bible study tomorrow, but the next Next Monday, a week from tomorrow. April 11th, I believe. April 11th? Yeah, I think so. Okay. April 11th, 5 o'clock here at the church. Okay. We're doing prophecy, if anybody's interested in joining. Yeah. Prophecy. Okay. That's a deep with subject. Of, well, it's with the help of Max Young. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're just saying. We're just talking about it. <laughs> Okay, good. Um, again, uh, if you still have the bulletin from last week, the memorial for John on, in June, on June 18th, um, time and place to follow, we'll, that's Saturday, June 18th. <clears throat> and have you counted the weeks yet? I think we're at like 15 or something like that. Yeah. We're, we're moving ever so steadily closer. <laughs> um, I, I apologize. I was going to try and have a camp meeting this week, but with everything and going on with Barb and Tom moving, and I'm trying to finalize paperwork for retirement, so just didn't get to it this week. So maybe next week yeah. we can, uh, maybe after church next week, because the following week, is that Easter? Yeah. I think we're, yeah. So maybe we'll just do one next, short one next week, and then just to get started. Okay. So we'll put that, um, so that must be, if that's the 11th, that must be the 18th. The 18th is Easter, I know. Is it? Yeah, so next week. So it'd be the 10th. 10th, yeah. Okay. The 10th, we will have a camp meeting after church. Okay. I believe that's all. Anybody else have anything, Mike? Anybody else? All right. I guess since we're not. So go ahead. That's the wrong um, number. I okay. didn't look right. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. <laughs> we we I have a, always have it. glitches, so yeah. that's no problem. I will find it real We'll quick. move on to the last song before the message would be In the Garden and... 588. Page 588. <laughs> All three verses? All three oh, verses. Yes. Thank you. 
catch in my throat this morning. <clears throat> As we said, we will um, partake in communion this at towards at the end of the service today. So as we are saying, um, we have Easter coming up here in three weeks, and <clears throat> you know, as the past week went, I got to uh, thinking about that. You know, the the forty days of Advent or whatever it is. I I'm at the point where I just I wonder as I watch through the through different religions and this and that how people become saddened at this time of the year. And to me, you know, yes, they're giving something up as as Christ has given up the show that, but it's gotten away from that. And as we see today, you know, the the as we go through the scriptures today, we see that where Christ has humbled himself to be as one of us. And, and I think of that is when we come into Christmas, it's all joy and celebration that the birth of our Savior ha- is upon us. And we celebrate that at Christmas time. But when we come to his death, and his resurrection, the gift that he's given unto us, it's, it's not a celebration as much as it is for his birth. And I, I struggle to understand that because why would we not celebrate for him what his gift to us on that cross? The gift that we got from God should be a celebration because now he has given us birth, our birth into heaven. Once we believe what Christ did on the cross, that is a celebration. That is the best thing a believer could ever know, that we are saved by God's grace, his gift of his son on the cross. And I said last week, as we go into Easter here, We'll start reading into this. And where I'd like to start today is um, in John, John 13. And before we go into reading on this, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer again. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for bringing us all together, the children of your children, coming together to learn of your love. Please, Lord, help me convey that love. Speak through me your words that we all may understand the love that you pass on to us. And as we look into your words today, that we understand where um, Jesus was and what he represented. We thank you, Lord, for Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So we'll start off in 13, and 13 has quite a few verses, and with communion I'm hoping to try and get through this, because it, this all leads up to, to why we celebrate Easter. But I, as we go through a, a, a precursor of him going to the cross, we need to understand Because at this point in chapter 13 is where he starts to show the disciples truly why he's here. I mean, they knew, but he really explains it to them. You have to realize it's only him and his disciples during the Passover, getting ready for the Passover feast, then one of them sticks out in here. And as we go, we will will see how this plays out. So chapter 13, verse 1 of John. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour 
was come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having, loving, uh, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them to the end. And I believe he's talking not only of the disciples, but he's talking of those that had faith in him and had faith that they knew where he was going. His followers, there was John the Baptist and all those that were following Christ at that time. And he loved unto them. But he knew, um, and, and the, I believe the end that he's talking here is not the end when he left the earth. It's the end that will be coming when he comes back and he takes all his uh, believers, all us believers, back with him. To the end of times, I believe this is what he's speaking here. So we go into verse 2, and it said, And a supper be ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. So they're all in there together in this room. And at this point is where even with, if, if, even if you are a believer and you're standing there with Christ, the devil still gets a dart in, and he's always constantly. Just think of it. Judas Iscariot is, still, is, is amongst the disciples. He's standing in with, with Christ right there, and this devil still creeps into his heart. So in verse 3 it says, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. So at that point, Christ is acknowledging, I am from God and I am going. And he's going to relay this message to, unto the disciples, but not only unto the disciples, so that we understand where Christ stands. It says in verse 4, it says, He riseth up from supper, a laid aside his garment, and took a towel and girdeth, him, and girdeth himself. After that, he poured water into a basin, and he began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that whereth was girdled. You can imagine he, at that time when supper ended, he got up, went over, not saying anything to anybody. He took off his robe. He took a towel and wrapped it around himself. And he poured the water. He walked as they sat. And he started to wash their feet. And at that time, I don't think anybody understood why he, why he was doing it. And we'll move on here. And it says, in verse 6, it says, Then cometh the... He, then cometh he to Simon Peter. And Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Christ Jesus answered and said unto him, What do I do? What I do thou knowest not, but thou shalt know hereafter. So we always hear back in when Christ was going through his times, his ministry, he always did things in parables. Or he did it in actions. Most of the time he did things in actions. As when we're at camp, we've discussed this many times, that people are 98%, or excuse me, 92% visual. And you have a 15, usually you have a 15 minute window, especially with kids. The more visual you are, the more they understand. And the more engaged people become. And not only kids, but into adults. So I believe that's what Jesus is doing with all his parables. He does a lot of visual stuff because it is ingrained and understood. So then in, in verse 8 it says, Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answers, answered to him, If I wash the not thou, ha, um, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part of me. So here's where it's getting into. 
the standing of Christ. Back in those days, um, if you were to have your feet washed, if I remember this all right, if you were to have your feet washed, it, it showed of the cleansing of you. Those that did not, um, you went to like the Pharisees and that, they um, usually wore something that kept their feet clean just to show, or they had servants washing their feet whenever they came in, inside. It was never, um, never any building that they entered into, usually they washed their feet. And that was considered the soul of the body. What was the first thing to get dirty was your feet. So that was the first thing of your soul to get dirty. So when you washed that, that showed that you were supposedly clean. But most of the time, it was a servant unto a master. And as we find here, the parable or the, the parallax that Christ is teaching that, listen, if I, you aren't letting, if you won't let me, if you deny me to wash your feet, then you're denying me. Because what did Christ do for us? As the song said, um, what will wash away your sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And that is the parable that is going here. So if you are not, if you, um, as it says in 8, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part of me. We go into verse 9 and it says, Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. So he's, Peter is also saying, well, if you're going to wash just my feet, why not wash the rest of me? My hands, my feet, or my head? And Christ gets back and says in, um, in verse 10, it says, Jesus saith unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean of every wit, and ye are clean but not all. So that comes back to the old and new nature. He says, I wash of your feet, but I am not washing your whole body. So that means, you know what? I'm a sinner. I'm still a sinner. I'm not completely taking the old nature away from you. I'm giving you a new nature, and that is... Um, that is what he is trying to tell Simon Peter here. Is listen, I take away sin. I pay for your sin, but you're still going to be a sinner. Verse 11, he said, For he knew who should betray him, therefore said, um, Ye are not all clean. At that point, as we said, you know, Christ is understanding more and more, and at this point, he knows who will betray him. And he knows that Judas Iscariot will betray him. So after he had washed their feet and had taken up his garment and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you. 13, it says, Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye and and ye say, Well, for I so uh, for so am I. Fourteen. It says, If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. So in here, he's getting to the point, and it'll be further down here. But he's getting to the point of. If I am able to wash your feet, then you should be washing each other's feet. So what is it he's saying? As brethren of Christ, as the family of God, we should be helping each other. He says, I am the master and I wash your feet. Why shouldn't you wash each other's feet? Meaning, I take care of you. Why do you not take care of each other? 
And that's what he's getting at. And then we will understand more as we get further down. And I'm kind of moving fastly through this stuff. But I want to make sure we get through this, this chapter this week. <clears throat> so into verse 16 we go. Excuse me. 14. For I have given you an example that ye should uh, do as I have done to you. 16. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither that um, he that is sent greater than he that sent him. So there he's putting the parallax in the Trinity. I am not any greater than God, and God is not any greater than me. Putting the parallel of the Trinity. As we go for, forward, we'll see the third person in that trinity. That's why God is the, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we'll move on to uh, verse 17. And he says in 17, he says, If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. And that is getting to... Um, into that helping each other as Christians, we should be helping each other. You know, what um, more respect would it be to, um, to kneel down and wash your brother or sister's feet? You know, you're at humbled and you, um, you don't put any of that beneath you and what respect it is to those, and then compare that in return, the respect you have for each other by doing that. He's getting at that point, no man is greater than any other man. There's nobody any better than anybody else. In God's eyes, we're all sinners, and we're all doomed for hell, but once we believe what Christ has done on the cross, we are all now one of his children. And that's how he sees us. So we move on to 18. <clears throat> and in 18 through here now, we're going to understand because Jesus puts it out there who it is. But none of the disciples understand who it is that will betray him. Move on in verse 18. It says, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. So he knows that the scripture has to be fulfilled, talking of prophecy, back in the Old Testament, for him to fulfill his duty, his job, whatever you want to call it, he knows somebody has to betray him. And betray him so that he has to go to the cross. We continue on in 18, and then it says, um, back up a little bit, and it says, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. 19, now I tell you before it come that when it comes to pass, ye may believe that I am he. And there he's reiterating to him, I am he, I am God. I am Christ. I am the one that will be the savior of all. And they will come to understand why it is that he has to die. Verse 20, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. So, now once you understand what Christ did on the cross, and that's what he's getting at, once I fulfilled scripture by dying on the cross, 
If you understand this, if you believe this, that is what he's saying by receiving it. If you have faith and you understand that Christ dying on the cross is all you need for salvation, then um, you will receive him. But not only that, God says, I will give you his righteousness to enter into my perfect heaven. And that's what he's getting here. I sendeth, uh, I sendeth, receiveth me. Whosoever I sendeth, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sendeth me. Sent me. So if, when you have faith in Christ, you have faith in God. Your faith in Christ is what he did on the cross. Your faith in God is what he says you need to understand and what you need to believe. What Christ did on the cross. It plays back and forth. Once you understand the one thing, you understand it all. In verse 21, it says, When Jesus had, this, had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and uh, testified and said, Verily, verily, I saw unto you that one of you shall betray me. As he was sitting there looking at all the disciples, it came unto him. It doesn't say how. It doesn't say why. It just came unto him. Maybe uh, Judas lit up. Who knows? But it came unto him. The thoughts that from the devil into Judas came forward and Christ seen it. Jesus seen. And he didn't say, Judas, you're the one. He just said, one amongst you will betray me. In verse 22, it says, Then the disciples looked on one another, doubting of whom he spoke. Spake. Now there was a um, leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. So at that time, then, um, as, as they, I don't know if they'd gotten up or what have you, if Christ was going, Jesus was going around the table, but he was hugging on to all of them. And it says, one of them put his head against Jesus' uh, breast or on his bosom. And it said, Simon Peter therefore beckoned unto him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. So as he was hugging, as Christ was hugging and Peter had his head against his chest, he just said, Jesus, who is this you speak of? And in um, uh, verse, uh, verse 26, it says, Jesus answered, and he it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had um, dipped the sop, so he must have, the only thing I could think of is he was going around the table, he was either doing what we commence as communion, or he was going around giving unto, because at this point in time, if he only give it unto one person, wouldn't everybody notice who that one person is? But he said he is, so I think he was doing this unto all, of them, but he was highlighting that um, he, uh, he it is to the whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it unto Judas Iscariot, <clears throat> the son of Simon. 27, it says, and after the sop, Satan, think, think of this, Christ had just given this to Judas. It says 27, And after the sop, Satan entered into him, then said Jesus unto him, thou, uh, That thou doest, do quickly. So I think at that point in time, as we go further, we'll understand this more. But at that time, Judas was right there next to him. And he probably spoke quietly. He gave him the saw, and he said unto him, That thou doest, doest quickly. 
verse 28, it says, Now no man at the table knew for what intended he spoke this unto him. And that's why he said it quietly. And I don't think any of them caught that or heard that as he is the one I should give. But he, he was giving unto all of them. And Christ knew who was betrayed him. And, this, and then all of a sudden Judas knew who, for whatever reason, jealousy, what have you, Judas was like, okay, I am going to betray him. Whether it be jealousy or what it was, but the rest of them, when Jesus said that, didn't understand what it was he was saying. Because it says, knew for what intent he spake this unto him. 29, for some of them thought, because Jesus had the bag, the bag of gold or silver or what have they, that Jesus had said unto him, buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or, or some of them thought that he should give something to the poor. Because think of it, Christ gives him the sop. I believe he was hugging them as he went around. He was hugging each one of them. He had him in close. And as Judas moved away, he said unto him, whatever you're going to do it, do it quickly. And at that point, Judas left. And all the rest of the disciples are thinking, did he tell him, you know, go get more food for the feast? Did he tell him to go give alms to the poor? What was it that he really said unto Judas? Verse 30, it says, He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. So in the same fold, as soon as Judas Iscariot left, we move on. The rest of them are kind of, kind of there. And, but Christ, now that Judas has left, Christ is now going to inform him that the rest of them of what his plan is and where he is going. 31, it says, Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Remember, Judas had just left. Christ knew what he was going to do. Christ knew that by Judas now betraying him, the scriptures will be fulfilled. It set in the motion him being betrayed, him being taken by the Jews or accused by the Jews, the Pharisees, excuse me, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He would be put in front of Caesar Augustus. He would be hung or placed on the cross. All this was set in motion. Now when Judas had left, he's telling the disciples what is going on. He is glorified. Now that he has set that in motion, um, God's glory, you will start to see God's glory coming up. 32, it said, If God be glory, uh, glorified in him, God should also be glorifying him in himself and shall straight away glorify him. He's talking of himself. I'm glorifying. God has glorified me. And what is about to happen? Now I am going to glorify God. 33, it says, Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Now he's talking to the disciples as children. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, ye cannot come, so now I say unto you, and he's, under, he, he's trying to tell them, I'm going on. And I'm going to do the work of my father. And the work of my father is for you. And now is when Christ gives them un, unto them the 
commandments that all believers should understand. These are the commandments unto all believers. In verse 34, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Saying this twice, this is his commandment to love one another. And the love for one another as brethren, as children of God, is the gift that God has given unto us, Christ as our Savior. 35, it says, By this shall all men know that they are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. We've talked about this before. What is the most love that you could give unto any man? The gift of Christ. The gift of God, Christ on the cross. The gift of everlasting life. What more love would you have for anyone to tell of a man that loved us, the Son of God, loved us so much that he gave his life for us as sinners. That our sin will be paid for. And then in 36, it says, Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whether goes thou, goest thou, um, and then Jesus answered him, whether I go, thou canst follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. So Peter asking, where are you going? And Christ just said to him, he said, where I go, you cannot go right now. Because I need to go through this process. I need to go through. I need to be crucified. Once I am crucified, once you understand why I was crucified, then you become a believer, then you can come to heaven with me. And this is what he's saying. But he's not saying it straight out. He's saying, where I go, you cannot go, but you can follow after. And it's the big picture he's getting at. Peter is looking at the small picture. I will follow you anywhere. And Christ said, no, you can't go with me. Because I am going, I am going to the cross. I am dying for your sins. You cannot die for your sins. I will pay for your sins, and then I'll be ascended into heaven. Once you understand that, then when you pass, you can follow after me. So then we go on to verse 37, and it says, Peter said unto him, Lord, why can I not follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. And Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The, cro the cock shall not crow until thou hast denied me thrice. And next week we will go into this. And we all know of, the, of uh, Peter when Christ was on the cross and three times he denied that he was a follower of Christ. And the crow, or the rooster crowed. And, Christ, and you see here Peter is saying, listen, I will take a bullet for you I will step in harm's way for you. And Christ is saying, no, you won't. Because my mission is to save you. My mission is on the cross. It's foretold in the, in the scriptures that I must die on the cross. And Christ knowing Peter... And knowing what will happen, said, listen, you will deny me three times. You will say, you, are, you know not of me three times. 
and the crow, or the rooster will crow. And as we go further in next week into chapter 14 and through 15 and that, as we lead up to Easter, <clears throat> we will understand more and more. And like I said, it, it is not a time to be sorrowful. Christ knew the pain that he would ad adhere, what he would go through on the cross. He knew what was coming. So we should be joyful and we should be celebrating this time of year. As much as we celebrate Christmas, we should celebrate Easter because it is the one main gift that God has given unto us, Christ, the love of God, the gift of Christ on the cross who died, he shed his blood on the cross to, to pay for our sin. He was buried and then he rose again the third day and then ascended into heaven. If we understand and we believe that Christ died on the cross, he was buried and he rose again the third day, our sins are paid for. We do not stop sinning, but all sin is paid for, whether it was past, present, or future. And we know that we need a Savior to pay for our sins to go into God's perfect heaven. He does not allow sin there. And with that, we'll move into 14 next week. Let's move on to communion. <clears throat> Excuse me. In communion, if you would like to follow along, it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. And it says there in verse 23, it says, For I have received of the Lord that which... Also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus Christ said uh, the same night in which he was betrayed, which we were just reading, he took bread. And he said, in which he was betrayed, he took bread. Verse 24, it says, and when he had given thanks... Let's go to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you, for the, what you um, for the gift that you sent unto us. Christ at the cross, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, that our belief in only that, as we receive that and believe that, that is our payment. Our, the payment of sin for all of our sin. And we thank you, Lord, that you shared this precious gift with us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. After he'd given thanks, he broke it and he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, verse 25, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, he had said, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. And it says in verse 20, 27, um, or excuse me, verse 26, it says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he come. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for showing of the love that you've given unto us, that Christ knew what was on the horizon for him, and he knew that there had to be someone within his um, his entourage that had to betray him. He knew that this, with the scripture that where he was going and what his mission was, and that was to be put upon the cross at Calvary 
to die, that his blood was shed to wash our sins, and that he was buried, and that he resurrected the third day, showing that he not only put down his life, but he also picked it back up, and that he had power over all, power over uh, death. And us believing that, that we have that same power through him. But believing what Christ had done, he has given us, God has given us his righteousness to, power, to have power over that death, that we have everlasting love, everlasting life in your perfect heaven. We thank you again, Lord, for all you've done for us. Please take us this next week. Put a hedge of protection around us as we enjoy this week and bring us all back together to learn of more of your love as we celebrate the time of year we call Easter, which is really of Christ's death. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Burdens on Calvary, Eddie, Kim? Which one? Burdens? Burdens on Calvary. Oh, okay. Burdens are lifted. Burdens. 60. 60. Uh, we'll do page 60. The first verse, uh, page 60, burdens are lifted. This week's verse that I brought forth um, is in Luke. It is chapter 18 and verse 34. It says, uh, excuse me, verse 31. It says, Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son shall come, shall be accomplished knowing that he was going to, onto the cross. Thank you and have a good week.